Um, hi friends. Um, I've seen many videos on internet and especially YouTube on Pascal's wager, but I've been very disappointed in what I've seen. Um, not even one of them actually represents it correctly. They are not even close to what he actually argued. Um, they drastically and direly misrepresent it. Um, atheists, Wikipedia, even some Christians uh, only show partial things and childish versions of his wager at best. Um, they often present it something like this. They say, uh, well, Pascal argued that um, you should believe in God because if you are right, then you will live for all eternity. But if you're wrong, you haven't lost anything anyway. <clears throat> That's one tiny part of it, but it's very far from the full thing. Uh, so I'm going to try to give you a little bit of an understanding about what his wager actually was in this video. It's hard to summarize a whole 300-page book in one video, but we'll give you some highlights that are more accurate than anything you've seen so far. I'm sorry there's no cool videos with this. I'm a terrible artist, maybe the world's worst artist. <laughs> maybe someday I'll learn how to use uh, video and graphics programs to compensate, but here goes. Evidence, uh, this is evidence. Whether it has good pictures or not is not the issue. What he actually said is the issue, and you can check the notes below for references as well. Uh, Pascal wrote, Theology is a science. Man is obviously made to think. It is his whole dignity and his whole merit, and his whole duty is to think as he ought. The conduct of God is to put religion into the mind by reason and into the heart by grace. Later he says, we must begin by showing that religion is not contrary to reason, that it is venerable, to inspire respect for it. Then we must make it lovable, to make good men hope it is true. Finally, we must prove it is true. And this is exactly what Pascal was working on doing in his book, The Pensies. Unfortunately, he died before he could, he could complete it, and someone else put it together in a fairly organized fashion. But even what he did write is stunningly powerful and a great argument that has never been refuted. And science has actually pretty much now conclusively proven his wager the wisest wager you can possibly make. You can disagree with Pascal, as I do in parts, and agreeing with someone in part, but not every detail, is very common among scholars and academia, so that's not a big issue, not a problem. Uh, for example, Pascal says, It is an astounding fact that no canonical writer has ever made use of nature to prove God. With all due respect to Pascal, he is simply wrong here. Um, the Bible says in Romans 1.20, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without an excuse. In Psalms 19.1, uh, God says, the, heaven, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. There are many others like this. So, um, his wager is pretty strong, actually, in many parts, but misrepresenting Pascal's wager is wrong, and I've never seen even one atheist represent it correctly. Pascal explicitly states in part 195, Before entering into the proofs of the Christian religion, and he goes on to list many proofs for Christianity, this is in short his wager. Number one, the most important question in life is whether God exists or not. Uh, William Durant and many other historians uh, agree with that, actually. Nothing is more important than this. To be an agnostic and say, I don't know, or there isn't enough evidence, which is basically the modern version of atheism, and lack belief, <laughs> um, that is the stupidest of positions. We are all alive, and thousands of years have passed, mountains of evidence, <laughs> and to say you don't know is just a cop-out. <laughs> We must wager one way or the other, and we are responsible to do so, and our eternal destiny is at stake, as well as many benefits and things in this life. Number two, there are many strong proofs and evidences for being a Christian from many fields. Um, he doesn't think the argument from nature is a very strong one, 
because there's evidences both ways, but there are many proofs in other areas. Number three, if you are a Christian, you gain many benefits in this life, and you lose nothing or very little. Number four, genuine belief and obedience to God gives you a very high chance of living forever with your Creator and experiencing wonderful joys and happinesses that nobody can imagine on this earth. As the Bible says, No eye has seen nor ear heard the wonderful things God has prepared for those who love Him. Number five, since there are many proofs of Christianity, and Christianity brings many benefits on this earth, as well as a chance to live forever, you cannot lose. There's no way to lose by being a Christian, at least with the genuine Christianity. My dad's a pastor, and as he said, there is toxic Christianity, so yes, that could be harmful. But with genuine, genuine Christianity, um, there's no way to lose. And so the most rational choice by far is to be a Christian. Um, there are many uh, quotes from Pascal's book that prove this. I'll try to just put a few here in the short time I have. Uh, probably the strongest one is this one. He says, The end of this discourse. Now, what, will, what harm will befall you in taking this side, meaning the side of Christianity? You will be faithful, honest, humble, grateful, generous, a sincere friend, truthful. Certainly you will not have those poisonous pleasures, glory and luxury, but will you not have others? Actually, I disagree with him on the glory and luxury. Um, many things, many, much of that has come from being Christian. Um, but anyway, um, I will tell you that you will thereby gain in this life, and that at each step you take on this road, you will see so great certainty of gain, so much nothingness in what you risk, that you will at last recognize that you have wagered for something certain and infinite, for which you have given nothing. That's a quick summary of his, uh, his uh, argument, actually, and that's what he concludes his main uh, point of it with, actually. Um, but, you say, but say you, a later quote, but say you, if he had wished me to worship him, he would have left me signs of his will. And Pascal answers, he has done so, but you neglect them. Seek them, therefore, it is well worth it. Another quote, he says, um, There are three sources of belief, reason, custom, and inspiration. The Christian religion, which alone has reason, does not acknowledge as her true children those who believe without inspiration. It is not that she excludes reason and custom. On the contrary, the mind must be opened to proofs. Another uh, one later. Finally, let them recognize that, that there are two kinds of people one can call reasonable. Those who serve God with all their heart because they know Him, and those who seek Him with all their heart because they do not know Him. Do not know him. Later, he says, This resting in ignorance is a monstrous thing, and they who pass their life in it must be made to feel its extravagance and stupidity. For that is, this is how men reason when they choose to live in such ignorance of what they are, and without seeking enlightenment. I know not, they say. Later, our religion is wise and foolish, wise because it is the most learned, and the most founded on principles, prophecies, etc. Foolish because it is not all this which makes us belong to it. It is the cross that makes them believe. Ni evacuata sit crux in Latin. About other religions, he says, The falseness of other religions, they have no witnesses. Jews have. God defies other religions to produce such signs. Isaiah 43, chapter 9 and 8, verse 8. Um, he makes several arguments about um, God, uh, for Christianity from reason, from nature, logic, many fulfilled prophecies and miracles and more taking up a large part of the book, actually. And near the end, he says, Therefore, because of all these reasons, I reject all other religions. I find it convincing that, since the memory of man has lasted, it was constantly announced to men that they were universally corrupt, but that a Redeemer should come, that it was not one man who said it, but innumerable men, and a whole nation expressly made for this purpose, and prophesying for thousands for four thousand years. Their books scattered abroad are four thousand years old. 
The more I examine them, the more truths I find in them. I find this succession, this religion, wholly divine in its authority, in its duration, in its perpetuity, in its morality, in its conduct, in its doctrine, in its effects. He concludes the book by saying, The history of the Church ought properly to be called the history of truth. Basically, um, Pastor gives many evidences for God from many fields. Um, he does think there is evidence for God from nature, but he thinks that evidence without faith is useless. And he also says that there is evidence both ways from nature. And he kind of complains and he wishes that it was conclusive one way or the other because then it would be easy to be an atheist or a theist uh, or a Christian. But uh, he says that the ev evidence is not conclusive one way or the other in nature. The case has changed a lot in uh, the time since Pascal. Um, and so, but he says that it's what, what you think is reasonable, but uh, it's also depending on many subjective factors. So it's not necessarily true. Reason is not always uh, following truth. It, it does sometimes, but uh, sometimes there are other factors that intervene and, and distort it. So reasoning from nature, he argues, alone is not going to solve the question. But there are many other proofs that combine with the evidence of nature make Christianity the only reasonable view of any on the planet. Um, since Pascal's time, the evidence of God from nature has exploded exponentially, and many evidences for theism have been falsified, and Christianity's case is far, far better. But other proofs are still very helpful and important. Um, I'm making another video on the benefits of Christianity uh, that are very amazing and very incredible and uh, also confirm his wager in many different ways. Um, so I hope that you check that video out and uh, see the evidence is there. I'll put some links in the bottom of this video very soon to some of the things that I'm talking about. But uh, very simply, a few of them in very, very brief form would be um, the evidence from many, many secular studies of science shows that people who follow the Bible's health principles, for example, uh, which were known thousands of years before science figured them out, uh, these people even today live 10 years on average longer than the normal people do. Uh, this is confirmed by National Geographic, Blue Zones, uh, over 300 peer-reviewed studies, um, and the NIH, um, and the uh, National Institute of Health and the National Cancer Institute are funding studies on this in many different aspects and other secular agencies too. Uh, there are benefits from morality, uh, Christianity has pioneered human rights, public education, established most of the private um, education centers and science centers in the world. Um, there's just a, an, a huge amount of stuff. Uh, human rights have been pioneered, um, child care facilities, orphanages, um, the, the world would be a disaster without uh, the, the contributions of Christianity, including the massive contributions of, that Christianity has made to science, establishing the first, uh, um, uh, pioneering the scientific method, uh, the first scientific experiment in history without, uh, with a control group was done by Daniel and Daniel 1, and most scientific fields were actually uh, pioneered by Christians or Jews and some Muslims too who believed in God as well. Um, so there's, there's a huge amount of benefits that Christianity has brought to the world individually and collectively. Um, and it's not just some er fairy tale thing for the future. It has real practical things these days. So um, we'll be talking about that in a future video. Thank you for listening and I hope you learn something and I hope you read the Pensies directly instead of taking critics' words and believing whatever they say without thinking for yourself, check it out. It's a good read. And uh, he makes good arguments, but there are much stronger arguments now that have developed since he wrote that book. And I'll be talking about those later. Thank you, and have a great day.